Welcome to this short video on the topic of mechanical impedance and the energy transmitted by a wave per second. Let's start off with the definition of mechanical impedance that is general enough to apply to any medium. Behind every wave there is a force that causes the particles in the medium to oscillate around their equilibrium positions. So at any instant the particles have a velocity as a result of the force. So let us define Z, of the mechanical impedance, as the ratio between the driving force and the resulting particle velocity. In each medium, the mechanical impedance can be expressed in terms of the basic properties of the medium. And we're going to illustrate this with a specific case, namely a vibrating string. As always, we'll define a coordinate system. The x-axis points along the string in the direction in which the wave is traveling, and the y-axis is perpendic perpendicular to that in the direction in which the elements of the string are actually oscillating. And this is a transverse wave. Now, the drawing shows only a portion of the string, but to the left of the origin, there is a force applied by the rest of the string. This is the tension force and at this instant it has an upward component so that the end of the string is being accelerated upward. And let us also mark the angle theta as shown here in this figure. That's going to come in handy in a moment. Note, by the way, the slope of the string at this instant. It is equal to the partial derivative of the displacement y with respect to x. So, the driving force in the definition of the mechanical impedance is the component of the tension force in the direction in which the particles move, Ty. This is equal to the magnitude of the uh, tension times the sine of the angle theta. Now, theta is in practice very small, so the sine is essentially equal to the tangent, and that we know is the same as the slope of the string. So, uh, we get that Ty is approximately equal to minus T dy dx. We have to put in a minus sign because although Ty is positive, the slope is in fact negative. So we can substitute the driving force and the particle velocity in our definition of z in terms of the partial derivatives of y. But we can also calculate these derivatives explicitly from the expression of y as a wave. And we find that, in fact, the two partial derivatives are related. dy dt is equal to minus c times dy dx. Here c is the speed of the wave. Now look at the expression for z again at the top of this page. That ratio of derivatives is equal to minus 1 over c. So the mechanical impedance of a vibrating string is simply equal to t over c. So indeed, z is expressed in terms of two fundamental properties of the string, the tension and the speed of propagation. You may wonder how the wave speed is a property of the string. Isn't it a property of a wave? Well, yes, but remember that the speed c is the square root of the tension divided by the linear mass density, which are indeed properties of the string. In fact, we can use this expression for c to generate two more equivalent expressions for the impedance. Which one we'll use will depend on the information we have in any particular problem. But why go to all this trouble? Well, the mechanical impedance has a lot to do with the rate at which energy can be transmitted by a wave. The power transmitted by a wave can be calculated as the product of the driving force and the particle velocity, both of which, as we have seen, can be expressed in terms of the partial derivatives of the displacement y. So if we again write y in the form of a wave and calculate the derivatives explicitly, we get this expression. This is the instantaneous power, and it is a function of time. If we want the average power over a long time, we need to remember that the average of sine squared is simply one-half. So the average power is this. It is one-half times the mechanical impedance times the angular frequency and the amplitude squared. So the power is directly proportional to the mechanical impedance. More mechanical impedance, more power transmitted by the wave. As usual, let's do an example. 
A violin string has a linear mass density of 6 grams per meter and it is under a tension of 220 newtons. It vibrates at 440 hertz, also known as middle A, with an amplitude of only half a millimeter. The energy comes from the bow. How much power is carried away by the wave? All right, at this point I invite you to pause and solve the problem and when you resume the video we will look at the answer. All right, we'll take the expression for the average power and substitute the data. Now, since we are given mu and t, we'll use those to calculate z. Omega is the angular frequency, which is 2 pi times the frequency of 440 hertz. And we'll put the amplitude in meters to keep everything consistently in SI units. So that's 5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. And when we put everything together, we get 1.1 watts. Pretty feeble, if you ask me.